It's been quite a while since the last time Nintendo showed Yoshi for the Switch. Was it still coming? Could it see a major design change since its initial showing? Or did it just need more development time? Well, the latest Nintendo Direct finally gave us the answer. Yoshi's Crafted World, as it's now called, looks similar to the initial showing, but there's been an obvious upgrade. The game is stuffed to the brim with details owing to the arts and crafts aesthetic. And this is an instance made for the old analysis machine, but what secrets and hidden details will it find? Well, let's just start from the beginning and see. Beyond the obvious crafted look to the opening stage, this is a brand new type of level for Yoshi to explore, as it's essentially a cityscape, or at least a town. Those weren't exactly common back on his island. Throughout this city, we can see larger buildings in the background that even have laundry hanging between them, while the shy guys hang out within, holding coins. While it might initially appear that this is one big open area, there is a limitation to where Yoshi can walk, and that's the yellow path that we see in front of the buildings and anything that this path intersects with. So on the left side, we see the path lead into the foreground, meaning Yoshi can go that way as well. But the shy guys in the buildings can't be reached, at least not without an egg. In a way, this might be the truest form of a 2.5D game. As the camera pans out, we see a few more details about this city. In the background, the clouds are made from intersecting paper and literally hung from small strings, while the other buildings are flat objects with windows crudely drawn on. Looking to the right side, we see that the path splits into a high and low road, with the lower option containing a piranha plant. But there's also a nearby flower that vaguely resembles the Ego Dill from Yoshi's Island. It's not exact, but this world is quite apparently made by a kid with an impressive amount of craft skills. There's a nearby bush that's actually flat, and smaller houses that have eyes and hands drawn on them, with the opening acting as a mouth. Why do these homes have a face? Probably no reason, it's just what this kid wanted. The left side features a small bus on the path that can't actually move, and a shy guy on a small island holding up a butterfly on a stick. Yeah, the pond is just made of paper, but you still can't cross it, which is why this piece in the center seems to have been unfolded. And considering there's an egg block nearby, Yoshi likely had to hit it with an egg to expand this platform, which we'll see an example of later, and reach the background path. This doesn't explain why Yoshi is now riding on a train, but we do eventually get a good look at it. The engine is made from a corked bottle with construction paper wrapped around it, while a spool serves as the smokestack. The conductor's room is made from a milk carton, while the wheels are pressed cardboard and boxes make up the other cars. But there's room for Yoshi to walk back and forth on this train, which could mean he'll eventually have to dodge some kind of obstacle. There's no indication of what that might be, though. As the train continues left, we see more of the city. In the background, there's a path of coins leading through the center building. At the very bottom, there's an open door, and we can see a path leading up and eventually reaching the roofs, allowing Yoshi to eventually jump onto a water tower where a collectible flower awaits. Below the tower is another egg block, and in front of that is more of the smaller houses. Like before, they all have faces, and one even has a drawn-on smile. But what's truly odd about this scene is the path itself. On the left side, it turns to the background, eventually allowing Yoshi to stand directly in front of the buildings. If that's the case, then why does there appear to be an unfolding craft leading over the pond? It works as a shortcut, though it's kind of unnecessary, unless there's more to how this level is explored and other paths were blocked in some way. After all, we can spot an orange cone near this path, so maybe it had to be moved somehow as well. There are a few more elements to this scene that are worth pointing out, though. For one, the rolling hills are made from painted paper plates, with construction paper trees glued to the top. And one of the hills behind that has a smiling face as well. Everything in this town is so happy! There's also more Shy Guys to see in the bottom right holding coins, but off of the path, meaning Yoshi has to throw an egg at them in order to actually collect the cash. It does make us wonder, though, if coins are somehow more important this time around. It seems hardly worth the effort to collect three coins on their own otherwise, and there is more evidence of this later in the trailer. Moving on to the next scene, this level is underwater. Kind of. Paper plates have been used to create the larger fish in the background, with the cut portion from their mouth being used to create their tails. Smaller fish are also there, and they're supported on thin pieces of wood that move them all back and forth in rhythm. There's other details as well, such as the colored cardboard acting as pieces of a reef, and the background wall having more simple fish pasted on. 
More interesting to gameplay though, there appears to be an arrow pointing in this direction on the left side. We believe this means that the earlier part of the level is constructed like the city where Yoshi had to navigate paths, but upon reaching that arrow it became a more traditional 2D challenge with bottomless pits. And the platforms that Yoshi's jumping on are all made to look like clownfish, which are made from stuffing balloons and attaching construction paper. At least we think they're balloons based on the tied off tails. As Yoshi jumps forward, we see that Koopa Troopers make their return in the game as well, and like before, they cannot be swallowed. Instead, they have to be spit forward to potentially take out groups of enemies, such as the group of Shy Guys just ahead. More significantly, Yoshi collects over 100 coins and does not get an extra life. Instead, the coin counter becomes gold. We're not sure what the meaning behind this change is. Maybe Yoshi has to obtain a certain amount as part of completing a level? Otherwise, the coins themselves have an egg on one side and the number one on the other. Of course, the lack of an extra life likely also means that lives won't be in the game at all. And just to point out the last couple of details, there's the duct tape used to hold the background cloth together along with a darker blue cloth below that's hung up by pins. Considering how the cardboard representing stone tapers off, maybe this cloth is to signify deeper water. Even the fish that Yoshi jumps on is different, being a bit bigger than the clownfish, though made in the same way. The next scene also takes place underwater, as it were, though we don't think it's part of the same level as before. Instead, it's likely just following a water world theme. This seems to be Yoshi at the bottom of the ocean, as we see a giant crab on his right, though it's not an enemy. Instead, it's made of a bucket, straws, and painted balls. Scattered around it are more straws made to look like sea worms, since they have eyes, and seaweed. Plus, there's tiny fish positioned on top of pins along with some marbles. There's a structure behind Yoshi as well with a Y nearby and some kind of large door with a golden cloud symbol. Is the crab trying to spell Yoshi, or is something else entirely going on here? Well, we believe this is somehow all part of a puzzle or possible fetch quest, and that clownfish cup that Yoshi is walking around in is part of this. You see, as Yoshi approaches the large door, it immediately opens and there's a celebration with fish coming out of the ground and confetti bursting out. It seems odd that Yoshi couldn't just go there right away. Instead, he's walking back from this crab, which itself is in a dead end. So we wonder if Yoshi had to get something for the crab in order to pass through this door. Maybe the clownfish cup is what was needed. Or perhaps the crab is just a side quest of some kind, but all of this does possibly indicate more exploration in the game. And instead of just finding collectibles, Yoshi is helping people. After all, there is a woman in a kimono waiting on the other side who might have a request of her own. The inside of this building also features our first 10 coin, which has the number on one side and Yoshi's face on the other, which is just a nice touch to give the currency more personality. The path also leads up and to the left, which extends rather high, although we don't know the destination. Now while this is the end of the scene, there was a moment earlier where we can see some kind of green creature blink. We have no idea what this is, or if it's an ally or enemy, but it's there doing… something. Continuing on, we return to what might be the same city level from the beginning. After all, it does feature train tracks and paper plate hills. Or it could be a different level with the same aesthetic. There are new elements to see though, including a cow, more flowers though they lack faces, and even tulips that resemble the giant tulips from Yoshi's Island. Further in the distance, there's an electrical tower and overturned tub-like hills in the middle of a flowing river with small waterfalls. There are even buckets in the middle to show rock formations. In the foreground, there's a quarry to Yoshi's right, though train tracks can be seen so they're not just some obstacle. Instead, the obstacle is the small house with a shy guy painted on the window. This indicates to the player that they should try throwing an egg at it, which then unfolds the building and creates a bridge but this also shows that throwing eggs is a bit different. The reticle no longer bobs up and down constantly and instead can be directly aimed. In fact, we can see a yellow glow appear around the unfolding house, which is another hint that this object can be interacted with. It likely helps the player aim at objects in the foreground and background as well and ensure you're hitting exactly what you want. What's cool is that when the house unfolds, we can see the string beneath the windowsill loosen, which is what causes the house to end up as it does. Ostensibly, this contraption is possible in real life, but doing this also grants Yoshi a smaller celebration, which gives a few more clues to the earlier scene. 
if he gets confetti for this, then that definitely indicates that a puzzle was solved when Yoshi went through the door, reinforcing our idea that the clownfish cup and the crab were somehow keys to the way forward. Returning to where we were, the new bridge also has a small tulip on the side, while the train tracks loop in from the side and down into the quarry. There is even a new building which appears to be a tower, though the windows and door are pasted on. The next level finds Yoshi in some kind of clockwork structure with gears in both the foreground and background, while the aesthetics resemble a kind of Japanese dojo. There's even a plaque in the back that at first glance says steel, but what appears to be an E looks closer to an O, and nothing else really makes sense. It's very possible this is just gibberish, but if it does say steel, then maybe this is a boss level? After all, that slogan does fall in line with Bowser's whole M.O. Beneath Yoshi is a line of coins and a key, but they can't be reached like this. Fortunately, Yoshi can throw an egg at the nearby switch, which again has a yellow outline to indicate the target, and flip the section upside down. Yoshi stays connected with the new ceiling until it comes to a stop, where he falls to the ground, but the path forward is available. However, the key is no more accessible than it was before, and it's absolutely necessary to continue. After all, as the section flips, we can see a door on the right with a lock and chain, so the only way to open it is that key. This ties into our assumptions of how the egg throwing works in Crafted World. In order to reach the key, Yoshi probably has to stand out of the structure and then hit the switch, which would prove that Yoshi can aim at objects in the foreground and background, as long as they're interactable in the first place. And we'll soon see an example of this exact thing in the trailer. But before that, there's another stage theme that seems a bit more like an overcast day, with a blue hue over much of the background, and that likely comes from the ruffled blue curtains that make up the backdrop. There are also darker clouds that are more solid than the ones from the city, and mushroom-like plants nearby. In fact, there's an overturned can spilling water in a pool that then drips over the side, though that looks to be all paper as well. To Yoshi's left, we can see an egg flower that spouts out more eggs, and nearby is what looks to be an orange egg. But that's something completely new. In previous Yoshi games, there are only yellow and red eggs. Yellow eggs granted a single coin when hitting an enemy, while the red eggs released two stars that gave more time if Baby Mario was knocked from Yoshi's back. We mention this because the lighting could be making a red egg appear to be orange, but Mario's not in this game so the stars would be pointless. Now Yoshi's Woolly World featured a similar concept with stars being replaced by hearts to show Yoshi's health. But there were no eggs in that game, only yarn balls. So it may be possible that the orange coloring is to signify hearts coming out instead of stars so as to keep them separate in the minds of players. We can't be positive about this though, as we never see Yoshi use one of these colored eggs in the trailer. We do see him hit the new cloud though, which has a clock face on it and actually flips the entire perspective of the game. It's still 2D, just on the other side. And Crafted World takes full advantage of this. While the front might be covered in craft materials to give the idea of an actual world that Yoshi explores, the back side shows just what went into making these. On the left side is a cardboard box featuring a character in a top hat and the word chips in big letters. And straight ahead is another kind of can, though we don't know for what. We can only see the barcode. Another can is behind that which features tomatoes and there's even safety scissors and tape on top of it, cleverly hiding these building materials. To the right of that is another pool of paper water, but it's the foreground that has the coolest callback. The box Yoshi is standing on is for a brand called Yoaster's Cookies, a direct reference to the Yoshi's Cookie game. So there's more than just Yoshi's Island Easter eggs to be found. Otherwise, there's another box that still contains the shipping label, though upon closer inspection, the actual writing is illegible. But we do love the pause and flip symbol on it, almost daring us to take a closer look. We're on to you, Nintendo. Gameplay-wise, we finally see evidence of Yoshi throwing eggs into the background as he takes aim at a group of Shy Guys who are holding blue coins. We're not sure why the coins are blue in this case, but we do see that Yoshi can aim at individual coins rather than the Shy Guys themselves. Still, with the way they're running, players will have to be quick so they won't lose them. We also see the eggplant spit out another egg, showing that they'll act much the same as before, shooting out eggs until Yoshi has a full set of six. 
There is one more really cool thing to note about this scene though, and that's the transition from one side to the other. As the camera flips, we get a blurred look at the rest of the stage, and while it's difficult to make out specifics, we can see that this all takes place within a single room. It also shows off more of the cardboard boxes that went into creating these stages, and simply goes all in with the concept that kids are putting these levels together for Yoshi out of craft materials. The next level shown has yet another different aesthetic, this one clearly inspired by a birthday party with presents, cookies, sweets, and streamers all over. Despite the look of food, none of the materials seem made out of it as the strawberries seem molded from material rather than organic. There's a cake on the left side with some birthday candles and a strawberry on top, which is all resting on a plate, but it can't exactly be eaten as the cake is made of paper. The lone exception to the food may be the donuts in the distance, though we can't say for sure. Yoshi is once again running around in some kind of costume, this time as a cupcake. To his right is a macaroon spring, and ahead of him is a stack of cardboard cookies that need to be knocked over. This creates a path across the tin of purple batter, allowing Yoshi to reach the background. And we're pretty positive that Yoshi has to reach the block with the cookie jar symbol as this cupcake to complete some kind of mission, much like what we saw with the clownfish cup in the door. However, there's still the obstacle of the frosted cake, which lies right in the middle of the path. We're not exactly sure how he's getting past that one. Next up is another Japanese-inspired level, though this one is outdoors. To Yoshi's left in the background is a slatted fence with cut straws acting as bamboo, which can probably be accessed considering the open door and the path leading in that direction. Yoshi himself is standing on a box wrapped in origami paper, while a moon cutout with a platform full of coins stands before him. There are sliding doors below that depict a shy guy riding on a cat, but they've already been opened, revealing a large golden throwing star behind it, though we think that's just decoration. Hitting the coin platform spins it to reveal a collectible flower, but when Yoshi grabs it, we see another change to the typical formula of these games. Usually, there are only five flowers to collect per level, but here we see that there are six. It's hard to say why that's been changed. Maybe to accommodate for larger levels? Either way, we see that Yoshi has another orange egg with him. Again though, the lighting could be playing tricks on us, and that's actually a red egg. We just can't say for sure. What is clear is that the Shy Guys below are wielding swords, so they're not really messing around anymore. I guess that makes them sword guys. We also see a bit more of the level to the right, which features a Hanafuda-like card above and another piece of door art. It doesn't seem like that cat liked being ridden, as it's now chasing the poor Shy Guy. This angle also shows that the path leading to the left is blocked off, so perhaps another switch must be hit to access that bamboo area we saw before? Exploration really does seem to be key here. The next level theme we see is a sunny area suspended over water, or rather a blue checkered tablecloth, with plateaus in the background. And it is indeed sunny because the sun is right there, smiling over everyone. Windmills, a tower, and a waterfall can also be seen with large carrots closer to the foreground. But the big thing here is that Poochie does indeed return as he takes out the new squirrel-like enemy. And a cute attention to detail with them is that as they get knocked back, their eyes become dizzy and swirl. World. This also shows that enemies vanish in a puff of smoke when taken out, rather than come undone like in Wooly World. So despite the fact that the world is made of crafts, the enemies are not. However, as Poochie runs across the paper vine, it sprouts offshoots and seems to grow with his run. We're not sure if it's a fun effect or something that happens naturally, as we see another vine that has to be unfurled. Presumably, Poochie running into it will cause the vine to unravel, but Yoshi might have to hit it with an egg before they reach it. We think the next scene actually takes place later in this same level, as the backdrop can be seen shifting colors. Not only that, but when the perspective shifts, we can see more colors including the one from before and similar clouds. But looking at this location specifically, there is a pin in the foreground on a blanket, as well as a flower pin and ribbon on the right. There's also the arch that Yoshi has passed through, which contains a string of lights to help make reaching this point more exciting. 
In the background, another tower and a cow can be seen, which isn't too exciting, but the clump of trees directly behind Yoshi most definitely is. Those four trees are arranged in a similar manner to Yoshi's house in Super Mario World. It might not be a purposeful reference, but it does contain two definite Yoshi story callbacks. One is the heart, which looks similar to the one from the Super Happy Tree, and the other is the circle that resembles Yoshi's health meter from that game. So yeah, Crafted World is really laying on the callbacks to past Yoshi games. But that's when something truly odd happens. The perspective flips all on its own. There's no cloud in sight that Yoshi has hit. This leads us to believe that this perspective flip will happen at certain points in each level and will last the rest of the time. It may not be every level, but at least a fair amount. The flip that happened in the earlier scene was only a temporary one in order to reach special items like the blue coins. That's why the cloud had a clock face on it. The perspective wasn't going to last. What's odd about this one though is that we're not sure if Yoshi is actually at the end of the level. Maybe the arch indicates that, but the path continues on. We have a possible theory, but first let's look at the new details. The nearby tower is made from a tin of Yoaster's cookies, and there's a bluebird on top. Farther back, we can see a barn and an upside-down milk bottle that serves as the silo. But the biggest detail is the presence of a poochy pup, except it doesn't stay there for long. There's a subtle fade where the pup is gone and a new timer featuring Poochy appears. We can't say if this is a different playthrough of the level or if it skipped dialogue featuring the Poochy pup, but it is gone. Now is this because the player is going through the level again and a new time attack mode begins, or does this time attack always start and the trailer simply skipped an explanation? What's strange is that it's not a countdown timer, so it's unlikely that Yoshi has to return to the beginning of the level as fast as possible, like with Wario Land 4. Instead, we believe that this time attack is designed around hunting the Poochie Pups, and while there's no punishment for taking a long time to do it, there is a reward if it's done in a certain time frame. What that reward could be if we're right, we're not sure. But later on, in what is likely still the same level, we see Yoshi running with three Poochie Pups while the timer has gone over a minute and a half. We suspect players will have to search the background and foreground for them before hitting them with an egg to have them follow behind. The big question still remains though. Is this something that happens on every stage, or is it some kind of bonus feature? Either way, this part of the level shows us the backside of the clouds, more cardboard boxes, safety scissors, and another can of those tomatoes. However, this time we have a better look at the label and can see that they're whole peeled. Now that's some attention to detail. We also have a slightly better look at the can creating the paper pond, although we can't quite make out the label. It actually reminds us of Surge Soda, so maybe it's one of those types of drinks? If so, Yoshi's levels are being designed by some hyperactive kids. Now the foreground contains paper snails, though they're definitely not enemies. The enemies would be the returning fly guys. And just to the right, we see more of the Yoaster's cookies box, which shows they come in squares, another nod to the snacks found in Yoshi's cookie. The next scene with this Poochie Pup brings us back to the city level, just from the other perspective. Yoshi has already gathered one pup in about 50 seconds, but there's some intriguing things to note right away. First of all, this is our first look at the normal wing cloud that can trigger events, but it's above a present in the middle of the lake. And if you remember, this was unfurled in that first scene. But that doesn't make sense if this time attack mode starts at the end of the stage. So either it can be activated at any time, or as we saw earlier with the path that serves as a long way around, Yoshi doesn't have to unfurl this at all. There is evidence that Yoshi has gone through this level already. None of the shy guys are holding coins, and the huge stack of coins in the buildings are gone. This means that Yoshi has either played through the level, or the editing we saw earlier when the Poochie Pup disappeared hit another run through the level, except it's solely to play the time attack from this flipped perspective. The evidence isn't conclusive enough, but there's definitely something going on here, and if we had to guess, we think this is a separate mode. We also get a better look at the crafting materials, which includes a box with Yoshi's egg symbol. Too little of the rest of the box can be seen to even guess what the box is for, but if we took a shot in the dark, maybe it's for a literal Yoshi toy? Maybe this game will blow our minds and be something crafted from the mind of a child that we actually meet, a la the Lego movie. Wouldn't that be wild? Further right, we see the entrance to one of the buildings that we noted earlier, with a ramp leading up and a hole to reach the third floor along with two shy guys who are just hanging out. In the background, one of the houses is hiding a milk bottle with a cow's face on it. 
Maybe the kids needed a snack? The next level is truly something else though as it actually takes place outside. This isn't some indoor room as the blue fence has pieces of wood nailed to it with the sun and clouds drawn on while pinwheels are stuck in the ground. Plants and vines can be seen growing too with obvious dirt just underneath. But there are still crafted elements like the flower that the two Yoshis are platforming on. It's a little different from what we've seen so far as there's string tying together the bent cardboard to make this flower. And that may be because these flowers fold and unfold as we see the large purple flower to the right spread out. The way it shakes likely means it's about to fold again soon. As the Yoshis in two-player mode continue on, we can see a butterfly drawn onto the fence and an actual flower growing in the garden. There's solid ground as well, which takes place on some bricks while vines grow along a blue bucket filled with dirt. Of course, there has to be hills as well, which the requisite cardboard fulfills along with hearts to give it a bit more personality. We then get a short scene revealing that Goonies will return and must be ridden like in past Yoshi games to cross bottomless pits. It's a beautiful mountain sequence though with a backdrop that gradually shifts colors to indicate a setting sun. Cardboard cones serve as the game's mountains in the background, while floating white balls with streamers in the foreground can likely be used as temporary platforms. More importantly, this sequence shows that Yoshis can actually ride on top of one another, and the one on top can throw eggs. We're not sure if the bottom can too, but it's definitely a new twist to the Yoshi co-op. Plus, this partner Yoshi is blue, while the former was red, so the color of Yoshi that you play as can likely be chosen, much like in Wooly World. Oh, and did you spot the red coin that appears, confirming that they'll be returning? Not only that, but there will still be 20 to find in each level, and they can be hidden among normal coins. But as close as we looked, we couldn't spot an obvious visual difference between the eventual red coin and the others. So even if the regular coins don't have a special purpose, players will want to collect them in case red coins are hidden with them. The next scene is more of an action set piece, though the location is completely new, and it's the first instance of actual water in the game. Yoshi is riding a crafted ship that has two cannons. By stomping on the launcher, a cannonball is sent out, and as we see, the one on the right is for long distance, while the one on the left is for nearby. As Yoshi fires into the background, we can see a little rug acting as a bird's nest on the rocks, but only one shot is needed to take down the Shy Guy's ship and reward Yoshi with a bunch of coins. Now that ship had launched its own cannonball, but its range is clearly shown and does no damage to Yoshi's ship. He simply has to avoid getting hit himself, which could be tricky if he's trying to fire his own cannon. As the next ship pulls up, we can see that the Shy Guy is actually dressed as a pirate with his own bandana, and that's just all kinds of awesome. Let's call him a pirate guy. But another thing to note is just how many coins Yoshi has, nearly 200. It makes us wonder if the color of the coin count will change again. Unfortunately, there's just no way to know yet. The final set piece shown takes place in the desert with pyramids painted onto the backdrop and long, thin houseplants serving as the palm trees. Yoshi is being chased by a bony dinosaur that's destroying everything in its path. Well, it knocks away the lower blocks while shattering the brown ones. Spring balls are back as well to help Yoshi get over the obstacles, but it doesn't seem like he needs them in this case. After all, it looks like Mellow Mode from Wooly World is returning. We see the wings on Yoshi's back. However, he never uses them to fly. Instead, they seem like they extend his flutter jump more than anything. Now, it's possible that the player in this case just wasn't using the flying ability, but then why have it in Mellow Mode? Could the wings act more like a power-up that extends the flutter jump? We're really not sure. But in addition to the piranha plants below, we see that this dinosaur has some kind of handle-looking mold sticking out of its nose. It it could be a horn, but it appears rather odd. Maybe the tip got broken off in an earlier chase sequence? Now while that's everything in the trailer, there was a piece of art released for the Japanese version of the game. This features Yoshi and a Poochie Pup next to a skyline featuring stars, goonies, hot air balloons, and even a plane. Sky levels aren't exactly new for Yoshi, as we even saw one during the trailer, but the presence of planes and hot air balloons certainly is. But then there's the image above that features a space theme. We can see hanging planets, shooting stars, a satellite, an alien, and even Yoshi in a rocket. 
Space dioramas are pretty common when kids craft things for school, so while Yoshi's never been there before, outside of Super Mario Galaxy 2, it does make sense for the theme. Either way, it's incredible how much detail Goodfeel has stuffed into Yoshi's crafted world. While there are definitely elements that are distinctly Yoshi, it's intriguing to see how these worlds are put together. Almost everything seems like it could be crafted in real life, and considering the real world locations for some of the backgrounds, we could be in for something special or surprising. Or this could simply be the look they're going for. All we know is that we want to know more, and we'll be sure to have the old analysis machine waiting for when new information drops. Of course, if we missed anything, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Yoshi and other things gaming.